Abby and I were married for a little over 10 years, and it was a wonderful 10 years. It seemed like we were always on the same page. No matter what we did, it was like we could read each other's minds from a distance. One morning, I was getting ready for work and noticed that I needed new underwear. I made a mental note to buy it the next time I went to the store. When I got home that evening, I found that Abby had gone shopping and bought me new underwear. She had stopped at Target to buy linens that were on sale and, for some reason she didn't understand, she had grabbed me some underwear. Another time, I was coming home from work and instead of turning right onto our street, I went straight. I don't know why I did that because I had no real reason not to turn. Whatever the reason was, I was almost at Safeway when I decided to turn back, but at the last minute, I turned into the Safeway parking lot and went into the store. I had a sudden craving for spaghetti with meat sauce, so I went into the store and bought everything I needed to make it. When I got home, Abby said to me as soon as I walked in the door, do you mind if we have dinner somewhere tonight? I've been craving spaghetti all day, and I don't have any at home that we can make it out of. These are just two examples of how harmonious we are with each other, and there are many, many more. Abby and I met in college, started dating, fell in love, and got married. We were both virgins when we got married, Abby because she made a promise to her mother on her deathbed, and me because I was too shy to accomplish anything with a girl. But despite starting out inexperienced, our sex life was fulfilling. Again, this was largely due to the fact that we were in tune with each other. I instinctively knew when and where she wanted me to touch her, and she knew the same about me. As a groovy gift, one of her sisters gave her a box labeled Sexual Exploration Guide at her bridal shower, and when Abby opened it, she discovered a pornographic tape. For the first month of our marriage, we played that tape over and over and did everything we saw on it. We decided to buy more porn tapes and became frequent visitors to the adult bookstore downtown. One day, in a lighthearted moment, I asked her if she was ever going to bring another man over to her house to do it for real. She blushed and replied, good God, no. I'm a married woman, not a W. I could never do it with someone I don't know, and if I did it with someone I do know, I could never meet him again. Being as attuned to her as I was, I knew she meant what she said. After 10 years together, our sex life was still rock us. We enjoyed sex or seven times a week, and it surprised us that most of our married friends who had been married as long as we had only had sex twice a week or even less often. We stopped buying porn tapes but still drew ideas from magazines like Penthouse Letters, Penthouse Forum, and Gallery. On a trip to Mexico, we made love on the little balcony in front of our room. Life with us was never boring, ever. It was my 35th birthday, and Abby threw a surprise party for me at one of the local bars. When I got home from work that night, Abby said she wanted to have dinner somewhere in a restaurant. I asked her where, and she said, the Harpies. I am awfully anxious to try one of their big stuffed rolls with a big slice of Bermuda onion. We walked into the bar, and the surprise was complete. We set about having fun, it was Friday night, and there was a band playing at the Harpies, so the drinking and dancing were rampant. Since I was the birthday boy, everyone wanted to buy me a drink, and around 11, I felt a little under the weather and passed out by midnight. Abby was on a booze binge too, but she didn't feel as bad as I did. There were a couple of people there who thought they were sober enough, and they put me in the car to drive me home. I vaguely remember coming out of my alcoholic stupor at some point and seeing Abby, dressed only in high heels and nylon stockings, walking around in a circle with a bunch of guys, kissing and groping her. I thought she protested, but I passed out without noticing it myself. The next morning, I woke up feeling like a drum being beaten over my head. My mouth tasted like a cavalry regiment had driven over it, and as I waddled to the bathroom, I swore I would never drink again. Finished in the bathroom, I went to the bedroom and found Abby asleep on the bed. There were signs of sex everywhere. She was wearing one high-heeled shoe, and God only knew where the other one had been. I looked down at her and wondered what the previous night had done to our lives. I managed to get to the kitchen and make coffee, taking my time in the bathroom, and little by little, I began to return to the world of the living. About two hours later, I heard the shower water turn on and realized Abby was awake. I was sitting on the bed when she got out of the shower, and when she saw me, she started crying. 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I stood up and hugged her. She buried her face in my shoulder and kept crying and crying. I led her to the bed, laid her down, and held her until she came to her senses, then took her downstairs and fed her breakfast. It wasn't until mid-afternoon that she could bring herself to tell me what had happened. I was put in the car with Sam, Alice, Greg, Nancy, and Sid, and Abby was put in the car with Ralph, Judy, Harry, Henry, and L. Ralph, Judy, and Harry sat in the front, Judy in the middle, and Abby in the back between Henry and L. They hadn't even pulled out of the parking lot before Judy was already cuddling with Harry, and her husband, Ralph, was behind the wheel. Abby had almost as much to drink as I had, but despite being high, she was amazed at what Judy was doing with Harry, sitting next to her. Henry said, see, even though she is married, she can still have a little fun, and kissed her. Abby had been kissed at parties before, especially at Christmas under the mistletoe, and she felt safe in a car full of friends, so she let Henry kiss her. Then L said he wanted to try it, so she let him kiss her, and then it was Henry's turn again, then AL's, then Henry's, and then AL's. A lot of tongue movement followed, and Abby responded to the kiss. She couldn't remember who first started playing with her breasts, but between the kisses and the sensations, she was getting a little hot. More kissing, more tongue caressing, and more playing with her bust, and then she saw Judy's head fall into Harry's lap. Ralph looked at what was happening, smiled, and kept going. As drunk as Abby was, she still knew what Judy was doing with her head in Harry's lap. She didn't even remember them undoing her bra. Abby's breasts are very sensitive, and soon the two men had her squirming. She heard Judy say from the front seat, Go ahead, girl. I knew you had it in you to become A.S. like me. She didn't even realize how it happened. Another car had already arrived, and I was carried into the house and thrown on the couch. Ralph, Harry, and Judy got out of the car, and Henry told them he would come over later. I don't want to give her time to cool off, Judy laughed. Don't take up too much time. I don't want to deal with all of you by myself. The walk from the car to the house gave Abby time to gather her thoughts. She realized that what she had just done was wrong, but at the same time, she liked it. She wished she could have fought harder so it wouldn't have happened, but she also knew that in her condition, Henry and Al would have won anyway. She guessed what was waiting for her in the house and knew she should run away from them as soon as they entered, but that wasn't going to happen. As soon as they entered the house, several guys grabbed her and stripped her down to her shoes and stockings. Judy screamed, help at last, come on, honey, let's show these guys what a couple of hot ass can do. And then Judy said, let's take this to the bedroom, and the men carried the two women upstairs where they spent the night having as much fun with each man as they wanted. By the time she finished telling me the story, she was crying again. I comforted her and told her I loved her, and she apologized and promised to be mine forever and never be in a situation like that again. The rest of the weekend passed quietly for us, as neither of us wanted to say or do anything to remind us of what had happened on Friday night. I knew that Abby was still shaken by what had happened to her, and I did my best to shower her with love and affection to show her that I still loved her and that she didn't need to worry about our future. Monday was not a bad day for me until about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly, images of Abby and other men started popping up in my head. On my way home from work, I was standing at a stoplight, and the image of Abby cheating on me surfaced in my mind. When I got home from work, Abby wasn't there, and when I walked into the kitchen, I saw the light blinking on the answering machine. I pressed the play button, and the announcement read, You have one new message and one old message. The new message was from a telemarketer, so I deleted it. Our answering machine is state-of-the-art and has more contrivances than you can count. One of the functions it performs is to record some messages that you don't normally think about, and I think Abby forgot about this feature. If the answering machine answers the call, plays the recorded message, and you answer the call using a different handset than the one on the answering machine, after the caller starts leaving their message, the answering machine records the conversation on both sides. Hello, Abby, it's Judy. Oh, hi. Are you in the middle of something? No, not really. Hey, listen, I have some friends coming over, and we're going to have a little party. Do you want to come? Pause. I don't think I can come. 
Come on, honey, a party would be good for you. I'm sorry, I really don't think I can make it. You don't think you can, or you don't think you should? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I really don't have to, but you want to, Abby. I can hear it in your voice. Silence. Honey, you can't hide it from me. I was lying on that bed next to you, remember? I know you want to do it again. Long silence, then, what time? As soon as you can get there. Who's going to be there? Just some of the guys you have fun with last night. I need to be home before David gets here. I heard a noise behind me and turned around to see Abby standing there, looking like she had just lost something. And I just stood there, looking at her, while the message reached me.